this source that worked. So, but some sources from cells from some sources might work this well. But what if from another source works this well? People are paying a lot of money to get these treatments. So should I give them a, a cell that will produce this kind of results or that kind of results? So that's that's a, a matter of degree. So I want to show you the scientific data of what what's out there. You know, what, what, let, let's talk about the you know nitty gritty of these cells. So. Uh, oh, the disclosure. Um, so I, um, uh, I'm in Los Angeles, so I treat a lot of patients in my own clinic. Um, I'm also the founder and medical director of Tower Biologics and also a medical advisor in, uh, for Atlantis USA. So those are my disclosures. So let's talk about these. So first of all, I'm not blocking anybody. Um, what are MSC, MSCs? Um, so what's interesting is in, in the, about 20, 25 years ago, people still believed that the only stem cells in the body were hematopoietic stem cells. Um, so, but in the early 1990s, that's when MSCs were finally uh, found and named. Uh, they represent um, the, uh, the class of cells that has in vitro capacity to, to form mesenchymal uh, mesodermal dermal tissues bone cartilage and fat. And uh, they've been given many names. Uh, they all stands for MSC, but there's marrow stromal cells. Initially, they were discovered in bone marrow. Multipotent stromal cells, mesodermal stem cells, mesenchymal stromal cells. So, so all these names, um, the discoverer of the MSC, or the father of MSC, Dr. Arnold Kaplan, I'm sure everybody has heard of him. Uh, so he has been very adamant in trying to get the word out to prohibit people from calling these um, stem cells. Um, I think he, he, he admitted that when he first called them stem cells that he was trying to create a little bit of controversy. So I think he's still trying to create a little bit of controversy. Um, now he wants to propose them to be named as medicinal signaling cells. Uh, because really that's what these cells, they're, that's the main function they have in, the, in, their, in their body. And that's not so much that they are gonna uh, differentiate and become all these other cells, although they can. And, and so that's where I don't agree with him because I do think they are stem cells. But what, what, uh, what he's trying to do is to try to, to prevent this misconception when it comes to patients. Because we're telling patients we're giving you stem cells. So people are somehow having this, you know, this mythical notion that these are going to be the cells that to transform into my own tissue that's going to replace my tissue, but really the main function is the paracrine effect, is how these cells, what they're going to promote when they're in your body, the, the pr promoting the regeneration and then the whole you know, slew of other effects that I'll talk about. Uh, so these cells are derived from parasites, so hovering right around blood vessels. And they are all over your body, in all your tissues. So any tissue that's vascular, vascularized, you have these mesenchymal stem cells, so MSCs. And um, uh, each, in each tissue, these MSCs actually have contact with all the local stem cells. So they are actually acting like a, like a conductor, like a, a, you know, a orchestrator of regeneration. So they are able to send cells, they are tissue specific, because each tissue, the mesenchymal stem cells are different. Just because they're, they're all mesenchymal stem cells doesn't make them all the same. So they all have a little bit of different characteristics. And they're able to talk with the local stem cells, uh, speak their language. And so why are we talking about MSC? So this is the important part. Um, because of all these things that make them important. First of all, there's regenerative properties. So these cells are able to hone in to areas of inflammation and injury, actually secrete these therapeutic factors. So they secrete growth factors, um, you know, chemokines, and they promote uh, cell proliferation, um, differentiation, and angiogenesis. So that's the, the promoting regeneration part. And then they're very anti-inflammatory. So these cells can secrete these anti-inflammatory cytokines uh, in response to inflammation. So that's a huge uh, part of their effect. And then they also have immune modulat modulatory effects uh, because they, um, let's just say in autoimmune conditions, they're able to promote this, this tra transition from the T1 dominant, uh, dominant system into a T2 dominant. So if things in the body are more anti-inflammatory, so healing and repair can occur. 
uh, because a lot of modern diseases we all know is the uh, is a is the flaming inflammation that's not calming down, so we're not really repairing. Besides the, the fact that we do have less and less stem cells and we have more and more toxic buildup. And then anti-apoptotic. Um, so we're talking about stroke, um, other presenters. So when when some cells, let's say stroke area, the, 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 the central stroke area cells are, are, are dying, and then they secrete these chemicals and they're spilling out their gut. So all the neighboring cells are receiving the message saying it's time to die too. So this you know, program self-death. So these mesenchymal stem cells are able to stop that process, saying, hey, no, you don't have to die. Um, so either hypoxia, chemical, mechanical, kind of a, a, a damaged radiation. And then they also have antimicrobial properties, very interesting. Um, so they've been shown to have effect against acute and chronic uh, infections. Uh, so they secrete antibiotic proteins, <coughs> how convenient. And uh, they've been shown to be effective against bacteria, virus, and some protozoan uh, organisms. And okay, so MSCs are everywhere, all the vascularized tissues. Um, so are they <coughs> no equivalent? Are they all the same? So let's look at some of the popular ways of extracting MSC. Uh, one is bone marrow aspiration, right? So that's how things were started initially. Uh, that's the earliest stem cell transplant is through bone marrow. Um, so uh, cells are extracted from the, from the iliac crest. And so the bone marrow has about 0.001 to 0.01% of MSCs. Um, that's, that's the stat. And then we have um, fat-derived MSCs. So um, mean liposuctions can be performed. And within the fat tissue, which is a very well vascularized tissue, there's a much higher percentage of MSC, about three to 10% uh, are MSCs. So these can also be obtained. Um, and you know, it has become very popular. And uh, of course in the US, um, it's not allowed to use enzymes. You know, the FDA doesn't allow the use of enzymes or expansion. So the, the number, you know, it, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's not quite as high as, uh, you know, if you do it in the US. Um, and then the next one, uh, so, so this is just a little bit more detail. You guys probably you know, all know about how the, the SBF is obtained, uh, where uh, the, 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 the aspirate is uh, spun down, and then you get the cells, and then you get secretomes, and they, they can exert therapeutic factors. So, so the, the most important question to me is, does age matter? So you're obtaining cells from an adult, you know, either a 25-year-old or, you know, a 65-year-old. But does the age matter? So what we know is that because these MSCs do per persevere in your body for a lifetime, uh, they do accumulate uh, certain cellular damages. They are susceptible uh, to, so that these damages can cause cell death, senescence, loss of regenerative function, or even neoplastic transformation. Whereas if you look at neonatal stem cells, MSCs, they're spared from all this, all these pro-aging factors. So um, it's not just me talking about you know, that, that age matters. So let's look at some evidence. So a lot of research has been done. First of all, so this, this study, age, the first one, age, uh, age adipose-derived MSCs are significantly compromised in their ability to support vascular network formation. So they're not able to rescue a age-associated impairment cutaneous wound healing. So when we cut ourselves, when, as, as far as healing, when you use adipose-derived stem cells, when, especially from an older person, they're not as effective. And bone marrow-derived stem cells, the second one. Um, when it compares, compared to younger MSCs, they have less myogenic potential and engraftment uh, properties. And then bone marrow-derived stem cells also exhibit age-related decline in all kinds of responses, inflammatory response, and they also express less cytokines and chemokines um, that are important for the MSC's migration to the site and their activation and their immune modulating uh, properties. So more, uh, you know, more research. So genes related to senescence are increased in adipose-derived stem cells with age. So the, the older you are, the more senescence uh, genes are expressed. And aging also affects the availability of certain uh, expression, certain markers. 
and, and their an androgenic properties. So the ability to form, form uh, new blood vessels is impaired. Um, the increase also when cells age, they, they've shown in bone marrow stem cells, the, the older they are, uh, the more they accumulate reactive oxygen species. And we all know that causes a lot of cell damage, DNA damage. And not only they have increased level of these reactive ox oxygen species, they're also more, more susceptible to their damage. So they're more sensitive to the microenvironment that's produced by these reactive oxygen species. So basically they're kind of weakened. They're a little bit uh, uh, easier to damage. And, and a little bit more. So young stems, uh, mesenchymal stem cell, from age one to five, when they compared in cardiac repair after MI, comparing to transplanting older MSC 